Okay, class, so now we're about to work a sample problem to find the confidence interval or a confidence interval for a population proportion. So here's our question. Uh, we have a survey of um, 1,124 working moms, and that survey found that 281 of them are dissatisfied with their work-life balance and that 495 would be willing to actually take a pay cut in order to spend more time with their kids. So we'll just focus on one of those. Each of those values could give us a sample proportion, that is the proportion of moms who are dissatisfied with the work balance, work life balance, and the proportion who are willing to take a pay cut. So we just work on one of them. Find a 95% confidence interval for the true proportion of moms who are willing to accept a pay cut in order to spend more time with their kids. So I'm going to do that part of the question. So we're going to switch over to my little space here so that I could work this problem. So let's see what we have. Okay, so the first thing we know is that we have a, a sample size that was taken. Oops, sorry. Got to get this stuff going properly. So sample size n is equal to 124, all right? Then we know 281 dissatisfied with work-life balance and 495 will take a pay cut. All right? So we want to know the uh, find a 95% CI confidence interval for pi, right? Uh, proportion willing to take a pay cut. Cool. So let's see what we need now. So the first thing we're going to need is our sample statistic. What's our sample statistic? Well, the sample statistic P is just X over N, which would be the number of observations of 495 divided by 1124. And if we calculate that's 0 0.4404. Right? <clears throat> so that gives us the sample proportion that would be willing to accept that pay cut. Now, because we're looking for a 95% confidence interval, percent CI, then Z is equal to 1.96. Remember, we have the little table that I gave you before, but we could always go and figure that out, which then would give us the following formula. So we're looking at P plus or minus the critical value, which is Z in this case, P1 minus P over N. So all we need to do is substitute our values now, 0.4404 plus or minus 1.96 into square root. Uh, 0 0.44, let's make sure that point, 0.04, and 1 minus 0 0.44, 0 0.04. So we need this to be a lot longer. Divided by 1, 1, 2, 4. So we could do the computation on that. Once we do the computation, we'll find that this is... 0.4404 plus or minus 1.96 times 0 0.0148, 
which gives us 0 0.4404 plus or minus 0 0.029 once we do the arithmetic on that. Then adding and subtracting, we will get pi lies between 0.44, sorry, 0.4, let's undo this, last, um, oh, I got it, undo each stroke, well, let's just, uh, 0 0.1, 1, 4, that's actually what it is. 0.4114 and 0.4694. All right? You can express that in percentages, which basically says that pi is between 41.14% and 46.94%. So we could write a statement that says we are 95% confident between somewhere between 41.14% and 46.94% of mums, working mums, are willing to accept a pay cut to spend more time. with the kids. Ooh, trying to uh, write to this thing is a bit challenging. So if we had a question where we said we believe that somewhere around 50% of moms are willing to do that, a logical question is do we have sufficient evidence that the true proportion is somewhere around 50%? And if you look at the uh, confidence interval that we have, we don't have sufficient evidence that the true proportion is 50%. And we actually have evidence that is less than 50%. So we could have used this, we could use this to dispute a claim that half of working moms uh, are willing to take a pay cut to spend more time with their kids. All right? So if you look at the margin of error for this question, the margin of error was this part right here. Let's see. The margin of error is that 0 0.029. We could try to reduce it to, say, perhaps 2%, or even reduce it to, say, 1.5%. Um, and we would have to increase our sample size to be able to make that happen. I'll do the sample size problem in a separate video. Okay? So hopefully this is helpful.